This time on Pedalbox, join us as we go back in time and look at some classic metal at Radwood at Vista Heritage. Radwood UK was held last year at Vista Heritage, located at what was once RAF Vista, which unsurprisingly is just outside of Vista, off the M40 in Oxfordshire. The site makes extensive use of all of the old buildings, hangars and the rest of the base for a huge automotive heritage base with many businesses that support it. This episode we're going to look at some of the cars that were on the main concourse, and also at this event was the Hot Wheels Legends UK Final, which we'll take a look at at a later date. And we're starting off the concourse display strong with the Alfa Romeo Roadster Zagato or RZ. Its sister, the SZ or Sprint Zagato, appeared at the 1989 Geneva Motor Show and went into production in 1992 along with the RZ convertible variant. Something about the square back triple square headlights, huge at least for 1992, 18 inch pepper pot wheels and the curved black dome roof on the coupe grabbed me and I've been a fan of these ever since I got a little model of one when I was young. Confusingly, neither the SZ or RZ were actually designed by Zagato, as the name would suggest. Both were done in-house at Alfa Romeo and Fiat, after Fiat had bought Alfa Romeo and decided to give a nod to some of the racing history by referencing the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint Zagato from the 1950s. They only made about 1,300 in total, with 278 of them being the RZ, while the coupe only came in the Rosso Red you see before you, the RZ actually came in three different colours, black, yellow and red, with yellow being the overwhelmingly more popular option. Go and have a look for one for sale, I bet the majority of the ones you find are going to be yellow. So while this red RZ is fairly rare, it's not the most rare of the range. At the end of production, three were made in a pearlescent white, along with one in silver, and an SZ was made in black for Andreo Zagato. As you can probably tell by now, I am something of a fan of these, but there are loads more cars to get through, and as much as I can sit and stare at it in the edit for a lot longer, we should probably look further down the line. This Honda Aero deck ticks so many boxes. It's a shooting brake, it has pop-up headlights, and with 135 horsepower, 2-litre, 16-valve 4-pot, with comparable performance to the Golf GTI of the same year, this one goes right on my wish list. And right next door, another icon, the 1993 Saab Turbo 900, although this is the final year edition of the Classic 900, so it is extra special. The Ruby model got a higher output Carlson engine, buffalo leather and wool interior, and only 150 mil made for the UK market, with the ubiquitous three-spoke wheels of the Turbo. It's one of the only cars that can actually pull these off successfully, and it even has a full set of louvers on the rear window. And here's something we're a little bit more familiar with on the channel, a Rover SD1, although unlike Chris's Series 2, this is a 3.5 litre V8 rather than his 2.6 straight 6, and it has the larger chin spoiler and air dam fitted to the Vitesse models. The inside of the interior is also in great condition and comes with some authentic period periodicals. The second gen Scirocco GTI shared a platform with the first gen but featured a 1.8 litre instead of the 1.6 litre and had a 5-speed gearbox instead of the previous 4-speed. This 1982 model is notable as an early example from that year as it retains the Scirocco script below the rear spoiler. The Audi 90 was the upmarket cousin to the Audi 80, here with the 2.2 litre 10 valve made famous by the original UR Quattro. This B3 also features the Quattro drivetrain and looks damn near perfect inside and out. The Volvo T5 came in a few different versions, including the 2.5 litre T5R, but even this 2.3 litre was no slouch. My only complaint with these were the throwing star wheels never looked right on one side, but that's because they weren't mirrored, they were just using the same part all round, but having left and right hand sided wheels for your car would be far more annoying. 
Right next to T5 is Brian, a 240GL, which has so far travelled roughly three and a half trips between Earth and the Moon, totaling 828,861 miles at the time of filming, and no doubt even more since. This one seems completely original as for the body, and really only has the smallest spots of bubbling paint in the usual troublesome areas. Remarkable for a 35-year-old car pushing towards a million miles, which will no doubt do at some point. This W210 E-Class belongs to Chris Pollitt of Pollitt's Projects. If you haven't already, head over and take a look at his channel to find out more about this and all of the other cars in his fleet. Lowered and on some pretty spectacular wheels, I'm really digging the look of this one. This might look like any one of Mini Coopers built across the years, but this 1996 Mini Cooper is one of the last of its kind, the final iteration of the classic body style, making only 150 of these with almond green paint, leather interior, 6560 low profile tyres, auxiliary front lamps and a full width burr walnut dashboard. Unbelievably, this one only has 15,000 miles on the clock from new, frankly astonishing. Every car show needs an MX-5, the ubiquity of them is hard to escape, and they really took over the reins of the simple front rear layout sports car from the British. It's always been a winning formula on track and in the twisties, so it's really hard to go wrong with one of these. But if you're after something which might be lots of trouble and usually serious, you want a Lotus. This incarnation represents the penultimate iteration of the Esprit, with the classic 2.2 litre four cylinder engine, which in 1988 still featured the infamous K Jetronic fuel injection system. Looking at the S3, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was made much later than 1988, as the differences between it and the S4 are quite minor at a quick glance, the latter of which didn't come along until 1994. It's a testament to the styling that still looked great from the late 80s right up until its final days in 2004 when it had been replaced with the V8 twin turbo version. This Mercedes 280CE is actually a shortened wheelbase version of the W123 Saloon and was less a sports orientated coupe like the SLC, whose engines included the 5 litre V8, versus the 2.7 litre straight 6 found in this car. And just next to it, something you'd be hard pressed to believe was actually built before that Mercedes, a DMC DeLorean. It's incredible to think that there's less than five years between these two cars being launched. The DeLorean finished its entire production run a full year before the 280CE next to it was even built. And even then the W124 which replaced it hardly looks like it's from the same decade. Perhaps if the DMC 24, 44 or 80 had come to fruition, maybe more manufacturers would have picked up on the styling cues and run with them. This 911 represents the gradual transition of styling that crept across the Porsche range, the design first being seen in 1974 on the 930 Turbo, with the Carrera name being revived in 1984 under this guise. And it's pretty easy to identify as a Targo with that panoramic greenhouse of windows. Originally this one came from the factory with the Turbo tea tray but this was removed and I think it suits the narrow body a bit better. The E31 is by a wide margin one of my favourite Grand Tourers, short of an Aston Martin Vantage, but no matter if it's the V8 or the V12 version, I would absolutely have one of these cars given the chance. The deep dish wheels have to be some of the best fitted on any car from the factory and set everything else off perfectly. As a later model from 1997, this 840 has the 4.4 litre V8 rather than the earlier 4 litre and has a 5 speed auto rather than the option 6 speed manual. Thanks very much for watching this episode. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel to get notified when the next video goes up. You can support us on Patreon from a dollar and you can buy merch at shop.pedalbox.show. Let us know what your favourite car was from the episode in the comments and give the video a like. Thanks again for watching.